The fish activity is a quick simulation you can use to introduce the free rider problem that occurs when resources are owned in common, what we refer to in economics as the tragedy of the commons. Setup for this activity is fairly simple. Use an overhead projector to project a lake onto the screen. If you don't have an overhead projector, you could use a large piece of butcher paper on the floor, or even use masking tape to tape off a section of the floor that you are designating as the lake. You want the lake to be easily visible to the students in the class that are not participating in the simulation firsthand. For this activity, you'll need a small bag of goldfish crackers, as well as something to reward the students with. We used coins with these students, but small candies or extra credit points work just as well. Scatter 15 goldfish randomly on the overhead screen or the butcher paper, but don't tell the students exactly how many there are, as the total amount of any resource is really unknown. Select a half dozen students to stand around the lake. These will be your fishermen. Explain to the students that they are not to talk to each other, but instead direct any questions to you. After all, this is a pretty big lake and we know fishermen like their space, so communication would be tough. Then explain the rules of the game. There are two 15 second rounds to this activity. Upon your command of go, the students may harvest the fish. You will pay them 25 cents for each fish picked up in the first round and 50 cents for each fish picked up in the second round. If you're using candy, you might say one candy in the first round or three in the second. Or if you're using points, two points in the first round, five in the second. Say go and then keep Start time for 15 seconds. seconds. Round one will it won't take seconds. long before one student begins to grab and then more will jump in. Three, two, one, now. We're at 10 seconds now, and I guess we, there's no need to go on to round two. Bring your fish up here. Because the students will not be able to trust each other not to harvest the limited resource, you won't have to play the second 15-second round. Pay them for the fish they caught, but refuse to pay for any fish that were broken or smashed during the race to capture. Thank them for their participation and have them return to their seats. Hold off on debriefing that first part of the activity, and instead call up six new students to stand around the lake. This time, assign each student a specific section of the lake that will belong to them. Be clear that the fish they harvest from their section belong to them, and also make sure that they understand that if they take fish from another section, they will be fined. Audie, this is going to be your section right here, and the last section is for Elizabeth. Okay, now, this time I have divided the our lake into sections, and I have assigned each of you a section. You have the right to fish in your section, and any fish that you catch in your section of the lake belong to you. If you do take a fish from somebody else's section, there's a penalty for that. There's a fine, okay? You're going to be fined a dollar for every fish, and I will collect, okay? I will collect from you. A dollar for any fish that you take from somebody else's section. It's important that the property rights are clearly defined. It's also important that the students believe their property will be protected and the rules enforced. Repeat the same rules as before and play the two 15 second rounds. This time, the students have an incentive to wait and harvest the fish in the second round. Now, you guys look nice and relaxed. <clears throat> it is a nice day outside. In three seconds, the second round starts now. Five more seconds. Okay, looks like round two is over. All right, go ahead and bring your fish up here and we'll pay you for your fish. A simple variation that you may want to include as you conduct the second part of this activity is to have one less student than there are sections of the lake. Keep one section unassigned. Chances are that the students will take or grab from that section during the first 15 seconds and use this experience to illustrate the importance of well-defined and enforced property rights. As you debrief this activity, point out that the two groups of students didn't behave differently because one group was smarter or one group cared more about the fish, but instead they behaved differently because they faced different incentives property rights change the rules of the game. They created an incentive to wait. And that time that they spent waiting was an investment. 
an investment that wasn't worth making in the first round because waiting would have meant no fish at all. But when property rights were defined and enforced, the investment was well worth it. This activity helps students see that property rights increase the value of investments that pay off in the future. An optional extension of the FISH activity tackles a question posed by Eleanor Ostrom, the 2009 recipient of the Nobel Prize in Economics. Do the commons have to end in tragedy? For this part of the activity, choose another group of students to gather around the lake. A smaller number is probably better, in this case three or four students. Ideally, these students would have been out of the room during the previous rounds, so their behavior is not influenced by earlier results. Explain the same rules of the game, particularly that fish are worth 25 cents in the first 15 seconds and 50 cents in the second 15 seconds. In earlier rounds, it was important that the students not talk to each other, but this time give them a few minutes to collaborate. It's very likely that they will decide to wait for the second period to begin and then evenly divide the fish. Okay, three, two, second, 20 seconds begins now. This illustrates that collaborative agreements for resources can help in common work. Engage the students in a discussion about what conditions would be necessary for these types of collaborative agreements to work. What Eleanor Ostrom said was that community matters and the size of the community matters. And if a community has a common interest and they trust each other, sometimes they can come up with cooperative agreements and arrangements to prevent the tragedy of the commons from happening. It's most common for them to be successful when the groups are small and the transaction costs of reaching the agreement are low. If these conditions are present, the likelihood of overcoming the tragedy of the commons is greater. You can compare this to fishermen figuring out how to limit their catch or farmers collaborating on irrigation problems. In each case, they developed institutional arrangements to solve a free rider problem. Ostrom's research has encouraged environmental groups and organizations to look for alternative solutions for dealing with the tragedy of the commons.